Hello, Collateral Gaming listeners. Chazzle Dazzle here from the Trial by Air Variety Show podcast. I just wanted to take a few seconds to invite you guys over to what we do. No, it's not video games, but we do invite really awesome and unique bands from all over the world. We dig deep into their souls and find really cool stories to tell you, and there's tons of music every week, so subscribe to us wherever you subscribe to your podcast. We look forward to having you. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I am Megan Gomez. This is Collateral Gaming. And welcome back to Collateral Gaming Podcast, the only gaming podcast that matters. We are broadcasting from somewhere in uh, somewhere in Texas. We'll we'll figure it out one day. <laughs> um, and today we are talking about something that I have been waiting forever to talk about, which is um, Horizon Forbidden West. I am super freaking excited. I'm going to do my best to tie my tongue and not spoil anything. But I'm about forty percent through the game, and I am stoked to talk about this today. Fuck yeah, me too. Uh, I was highly anticipating this game. Uh, we talked about Horizon Zero Dawn in the first part of this episode, so you can hear what we had to say about it there. Uh, I know it's it's one of Megan's favorite games. It's one of the ones that she wanted to recommend. So uh, as soon as she thought about it, I thought, hey, you know, isn't there a Forbidden West game coming out right now? Let's let's hold off on that and let's release that side by side, and that way we can talk about the new game. And and uh, yeah, holy shit, it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I mean, it, it is. It's an improvement on the first game in almost every way. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like 100%. I, you know, me being such a big lover of Zero Dawn, I did not think that Forbidden West could, like, make me love this even more. And I was, like, really terrified. I was like, you know, like, some sequels, they aren't as good. You know, we've seen that in a lot of series that we've talked about. And I was so terrified, especially because, you know, I've, you know, Xbox exclusives, you know, God of War, they did okay, but, or God of War, uh, Gears of War. <laughs> I was one word <laughs> off. Um, you know, they did say. okay, but I feel like number four, like, wasn't exactly what I was expecting when we were returning back. Um, and I was really kind of scared for that because PlayStation, you know, collaborated with Gorilla for this game. So I was like, um, please don't fuck this up for me because I love Aloy with every bit of my gamer being. So can we not, please? Like, <laughs> I was so terrified. But when they started showing trailers and gameplay and stuff, I was like, oh, man, my world's about to be shook. And 40 percent through, I'd say I'm shook. (laughs) Hell yeah. Uh, Yeah, no, it is actually surprisingly, astonishingly uh, and massively improved. And that's running on the PS4. I haven't even played it on the PS5 yet, Um, but it plays a hell of a lot smoother. I have noticed something I brought up last episode is that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn tends to try to over tends to overheat my PS4. Forbidden West ha- does have the same issue, but not as bad. Whereas with, interesting. with Zero Dawn, it was getting to the point where I, I could only play for maybe like half an hour at a time. Uh, Forbidden West, I guess, utilizes its resources better, and it usually takes a couple hours before I get to that point where it, it overheats. And I kind of just, uh, instead of letting the whole thing crash, I kind of, I, I, I'll get to a save point as fast as I can, like even if I have to fast travel over there. And, you know, <laughs> then do it. Handle your biz. Handle my biz. <laughs> but even so, I managed to play a bit into the game, not nearly as far as Megan probably, but I did get into the Forbidden West and uh, the actual part of the game that, you know, where, where, where the open world fully uh, opens up, so to speak. The map is fully open to you. And boy, am I impressed. I mean, and, and, and that new map definitely looks a lot bigger than It is, Zero though. Dawns. It is freaking massive like i'm 40 percent through the game so i'm only a little bit into the west compared to the rest of the map and alan and i have been playing this game together which has been really fun you know we we like to do that a lot with single players because like there's times when i'm a better player because i stealth a lot and aloy uses a lot of stealth and there's times where you know there's a big freaking machine and i just don't want to deal with it so i give it to alan in the cauldrons too um i have noticed um i know last time we were talking about our playstations not really working i did take mine to a shop and i got it cleaned out luckily there was no issues it just seemed like there was a lot of dust buildup. i do have a, a ps4 slim the second generation i think um so i bought mine used um 
and I took it to the, those people. I have not had any issues. I'm able to play for hours at a time. Um, my fan still does get a little bit loud, but I have noticed that, you know, it's not as bad as, as Zero Dawn. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm loving this game so far. And actually, we were talking about this before the podcast. Y'all, I think this is the first time I'm ahead of Ash <laughs> on a game. And it freaks me out because I'm uh. like wait, you're not past me yet? Like, excuse me, like, sir, like, what's going on? Why are we backwards? What? <laughs> it won't be the last time, and it, and it, it's not the first time any one of my co-hosts have been ahead of me. I mean, there, there's a few episodes where I didn't actually make it all the way through the game. And uh, yeah, even recently, I think, uh, there was... Uh, Zach, Zach gets ahead of me a oh, lot, yeah. actually. So, but no, I, I'm loving it. If, if I wasn't having PlayStation issues, I promise I'd be playing this nonstop, to be honest with you. Like, it is so good. It's hard to put down. It's yeah. very hard to put down. And I, I mean, it kind of a weird timing window. It, it's like kind of competing with Elden Ring. And yet it's kind of doing so competently, I, I'll say. I mean, I think people are kind of talking about both games. And yeah. that says something because, you know, something we mentioned was that Zero Dawn was overshadowed by Breath of the Wild at the time. And, you know, you would expect the exact same thing happened here. And, it, and you're like, Gorilla, why didn't you learn? But no, actually, uh, I, I, I've heard people talking about this one, too, because it, yeah. I think a lot of people realize it, it's it's so much better than, than the first game in, in a lot of different ways. And yet, at its core, it's the same. It, it has everything that... That um, everything that made the first one original, it's just that they've really just completely expanded on the concept. I mean, or I guess let's sort of talk about that. I mean, what's new here in terms of gameplay? In terms of gameplay, so there are some things I will tell y'all now. This is not a spoiler because this was in the trailer. Um, so if y'all haven't played the game yet at all or picked it up, I promise you I'm not spoiling anything. Um, so you do get a glider. So you're able to jump from high distances and glide down so you're not taking damage. And it's an easier way to kind of get around. Um, and you do use this a lot in puzzle elements. Um, as well as a diving mask or rebreather. Um, it's uh, it, it's almost like we were talking about this before the podcast. It looks almost like um, cows. Yeah. In, in Jedi Fallen Order. Um, and it's, it's you know, got this round little mouthpiece and two little tendrils that come out of it. So you've got that element. Um, there's also a lot more uh, machines, and they're so diverse. Um, they're all very different. And whereas in the first game, you can kind of use one kind of ammo to take down machines this kind you this time you have to think you're like okay i really do need to be using acid or fire or purge water or whatever because you have to be able to use an elemental on these big machines and for me personally something that i've noticed is with the um the bigger machines they're a lot different in their dynamic like very very interesting the way that they're built and <laughs> thinking about it now it's so funny because like you see like the bigger machines whenever you're you know getting towards the end of zero dawn these like these motherfuckers are like they would kill everything in norland like yeah. the nora would get figgity fucked and wrecked like in two seconds two seconds <laughs> yeah no for real i mean the machines are bigger and badder this time as we would have mm -hmm. come to expect because that was something that was that was that was made a point of in zero dawn was that the machines were getting deadlier and new types were being created and the forbidden west area is is called that for a reason it is it is a much more savage wasteland uh they have a bigger problem with uh machine control and whatnot and that's uh and, and you can see that. I mean, a lot of the same machines from the first game do return. And mm -hmm. a lot of the new machines are themselves similar to ones we've seen yeah. before. Like the scroungers are, are pretty much the same thing as scrappers. and uh, Yeah. The, the, the chargers uh, are the same as striders. Which, uh, I mean, they are in the first game, but they're a little bit different in the West. Yeah, and, uh, and and I will say that uh, the the burrowers, which are kind of like the new century type enemies, like I mean, the they're, watchers, they're pretty much the same thing, but actually much uh, more difficult. I think they feel like they have more uh, combat ability than the uh, than the they watchers do, do. Though, like they're they're more scary than a watcher. Like, um, I think there's been like one time that I fought a watcher, and it seemed like a baby bag bitch compared to a level five burrower. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the machines have different elemental weaknesses now too. I noticed because uh, I, I remember scrappers were in the first game and they had a power cell on the back. Now they have plasma cells, or kind of they switched yeah. it up a little bit, I guess. And the scroungers have power cells on the back. I don't know. 
And something that I, I really miss um, that's not in this game, and, and this is something that I will spoil because I know I use this a lot personally, especially against humans, there is no lure call anymore. And I do, yeah. I loved the lure call because it was a very easy way to, um, you know, be very stealthy and you could take things down slowly and you can kind of, you know, make sure that you're not overwhelming yourself with so many enemies. That's not in this game. And I really, really, really don't like that. Like, I know that it's an improvement, you know, we're supposed to move forward and, you know, new things, but I miss my lure call. Well, like, I really do. I think in a sense, they're trying to kind of increase the difficulty here. And I remember once you get the lure call, the rocks pretty much become useless and you start using the lure call because it only lures one enemy at a time. So I'm actually thankful in a way that I've had to resort to different tactics yeah. because with the rocks, it's like... There's so many of them, you'll never run out. But there is a little bit of that additional stress of, you know, like I've got a lim limited supply. Uh, if I throw one, it's going to attract multiple enemies. And I've started rethinking my strategies more. Instead of luring enemies to me in the grass, instead I'll kind of uh, throw the rocks so that they turn around and I can stab them in the back. Uh, yeah. it, enemies are also more well guarded, I've noticed, especially yes. human enemies. I used to be able to take out entire bandit cap caps solely by like headshotting everyone. You can't do that anymore. Oh my anymore. god, yes. Yeah, it's a lot more <laughs> difficult and even sneaking up on them, like they are more aware in the West. And something I, I wanted to mention this before we get too far away from from um everything as far as like gameplay. Um the thing that I'm really loving about the West is how diverse these tribes are. Like they are very, very, very diverse. Um, and they're super fucking cool. Um, just the way, like even just it, when you first get out, cause like basically the West is like everything past Karja territory. Um, so you're, you're getting away from everything that, you know, you know, Meridian and you know, all that stuff. Um, so it's interesting that, they're they're very similar people in their aspects they're very savage um but yet they have this you know beautiful like artwork like i don't i don't want to give anything away but it, this game is just like i didn't think they could improve on this much because you know the nora are very beautiful people and i i love that you know they have their tribal face paints and stuff but it gets even more intense in this game and it's so fucking dope like i freaking yeah. love it yeah like, there's just so much to love there's a whole there's a whole new set of, of tribes and and uh, the Tanakh are, are kind of like the main seem to be the main tribe that occupy the West. Uh, they don't like the Karja. I've just like everybody in Zero Dawn, they hate the Karja. Um, yeah. <laughs> you still deal with a little bit of that politics in, in the beginning Poor of the Avad. game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with uh, between uh, the Karja and the Osirim, for instance. Uh, fuck Olvind. <laughs> oh God, I hate that bastard. It was so, so nice. I, I, I'm i not even going to consider this a spoiler. It's not that big of a deal. It was so, so nice taking him down and seeing oh, yeah. him get replaced by somebody else. A familiar face, I guess, from the first game, which I didn't recognize. I actually had that problem. So I guess I didn't get far enough into the first game because there are a lot of faces that Haloy seems to recognize that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the If you're talking about the two people, then yeah, they're at, at, the, at the end of the game. Uh. The two of two. There was also this Karja chick that that she run into that was apparently from the first game, and yes, I just did that side mission, and I was like, I don't know who you are, and also the the Osram chick, yeah, Petra, I guess, yeah. So there 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 are a lot of characters that I wasn't very familiar with, but then you know I see like Aaron, and I'm like Aaron. I was so yeah. excited to see him. I was like, he's baby boo thing. I freaking love him. <laughs> and Varl, and goddamn, Varl goes through some character development. I don't want to say anything, but I want to say it. <laughs> no, you know who goes through some intense character development though is Aloy. Like, like yeah. she was a bad bitch before, but now she's like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I'm not gonna let you talk to me like this. Like, well, there are moments where you're like, wait, Aloy, did you just say that? And they actually cuss in this game. Yes, finally. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I've noticed is that they actually are kind of highlighting some of Aloy's character flaws, and you see that in her genetic template, uh, Elizabeth Sobek. Um, yes. I'm not going to consider that a spoiler of the first game now. Well, first of all, we did a whole episode on it. Second of all, they they spill the beans right at the beginning of this one. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sobek, who Aloy thought was her mother, right? She's actually her genetic template. She's the clone of her. Um, they're you actually run through some parts of the game and you get to listen to some old data points and, you know, you listen to Elizabeth talk and you see her making kind of the same 
the same mistakes that Aloy herself makes, which is trying to yeah. burden herself too much with and not everything. sharing burdens yes. with anybody. I mean, even Travis makes a point of it sometime. One, one, at one point, he's like, you know, do you have any friends? <laughs> yeah, poor Elizabeth. She's like, friends are not important right now. <laughs> I mean, she's obviously has a huge heart because, you know, she cares about the world. And Aloy does too. But it, it honestly kind of got irritating at the beginning of the game watching Aloy be so fucking independent. I'm like, Jesus Christ, let some people yeah. fucking help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's that's something that I'm really loving about this game is – we're not so much like because I'm still not noticing a romantic element and I, I don't want that for Aloy right now. Like maybe maybe down the road, you know, and, and there is like some insinuation with some characters. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not ready for her to be romantically involved with somebody because she's so independent that she needs to find a way to find her dependence. And I think the first step in that is making sure that she can let people in and actually talk about, you know, what she's been going through and all this stuff. And you you do kind of get to see that. I'm not going to let, t- you know, too much come out of my mouth because I'm a little bit far. And, you know, I'm in I'm in a critical point, you know, getting through this part of the game, you know, I'm almost at the halfway point. Um, But yeah, there's definitely I feel like a lot of a lot of development for Aloy to stop being so fucking independent and just not letting herself in with other people. I love that. And I'm here for it. And she's just becoming this 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 I I don't even know, like the word that I want to say, but she's just becoming like this this matron, like just. She's she's very caring and she loves the world. And, you know, like even with just like small side quests, like you notice that like she's always like, oh, hey, like what's going on? Like, I'll see if I can do it if I'm out that way. Like she's never going to say no to somebody like she's always like, yeah, like, what do you need? Like, I may be trying to save the world right now, but I can still try and help you all I can. Yeah. And it's so I, I think we very early on that blood element is introduced and so i'm expecting that there's going to be a turn of around point in the story where aloy realizes that she kind of has to allow other people to help especially because so many people in her life actually genuinely want to help and you know yes you, you hear like just the exasperation in aaron's voice where it's like yeah like i absolutely love you like i'm gonna do anything for you and whatever but like you know, he wants to help gotta more. Let me in. He's frustrated about it. And, you know, and Varl, too. Poor Varl just, like, follows her around like a like a little puppy dog. <laughs> oh, my God. He And, you know, he, he really – you can tell that these people actually, like, love her for who she is, not because she's, you know, the savior of Meridian. And I, I just love that. I love that they're not just like, oh, well, fuck you. You know, like, you, you, you know, did this to me once. You know, like, you just – you're you're Aloy. You know, like, they're like, oh, you're Aloy and you have flaws, but we still love you. And I thought a lot of it had to do with her her upbringing as an outcast, and that probably does play a huge part into why she's so guarded. But yeah. it's also maybe part of her genetic code because uh, Elizabeth had the same issue. Maybe she had similar circumstances growing up or something. But yeah, um, being too smart for her own fucking good. You know, well, in, in Ayla's case, that w- that wasn't even her fault. I mean, she was just an outcast. She was treated like that since birth, and yeah, it makes you wonder uh, if if there was any sort of. Uh, and any sort of the same issues, I guess, in, in Elizabeth's life, because you notice a lot of the the, the parallels, and so I'm, I'm I'm looking at Aloy to kind of pick up on that. But uh, outside of you know the characters and the story, uh, another thing, a few things I wanted to kind of I guess kind of touch touch up touch upon. Uh, you mentioned, of course, the glider, which is super helpful given the expanded map. Now that you have the ability to traverse easier, you know, I, I was using the paraglider in Dying Light too. I actually unlocked that recently, right before I did the episode on that. So it reminds me of that. And of course, we're going to draw the comparison to Breath of the Wild here. But I just think it's sort of a thing that a lot of games, uh, open world games, could take advantage of. Yeah. So being able to just get across the map more quickly and, and having more traversal elements. Of course, you also have the uh, the rope caster, or not rope caster. Uh, pull caster. Pull caster. Pole caster, yeah. Yeah, there already was a rope caster. The pole caster, um, you get that very early on within the prologue segment. And that's really cool. That's a grappling device. You know, it's it, that's what it is. It's basically a grapple gun. <laughs> the way that she goes, it's a, a, a pole caster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so she's a fucking comedian, though. Like, she really is. Yeah. It's cool because it allows you to pull things down. Uh, not dissimilar to the way that that tool worked in Tomb Raider. But it also allows you to zip up to things, you know, kind of like Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. I'm Italy. <laughs> By the way, the Batman is really good. We haven't seen it yet. Don't spoil it for me. <laughs> I won't. I won't. But you need to you need to watch it soon because it's it is really good. And we're gonna do an episode on Collateral Cinema tonight. Oh, nice. 
spoiler free episode for that as well. Yeah, I think it's the best Batman movie so far, honestly. <laughs> and Ooh. that's saying a lot because the Nolan films are masterpieces. And I yeah. think this movie's very much in the same vein as those. But we'll talk about that on the collateral cinema side. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, don't let me get into a tangent about freaking Christian Bale because I those are those are comfort movies for me. I will watch all three of them if I'm ever feeling sick or just not feeling good, like or just wanting to watch something. Like I will fall asleep to the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> but no uh I, yeah i love a lot of the new uh like traversal methods in the game uh ala is able to free climb a lot more they've added the ui element um instead of just having everything be actually literally yellow in the environment there still is a lot of yellow everywhere but instead yeah. now you can actually use your focus and there's a quick focus pulse that you oh can my god that now. throws me off every fucking time every fucking time because i'm so used to clicking it you know and getting the normal focus and even still like i've been playing this game for almost 45 hours now actually almost 50 i think at this point because we played for quite a while last night um and i still fucking do that every single time i try and just click on it and i'm like damn it that's the grappling thing but there is you can um actually i like that there is a a option to not have it be as obvious for you um so if you do want a little bit more of a challenge challenge you can take away a lot more of that yellowing it's not going to be so much on like the construction you know like on, on ruins and stuff but like as far as getting help from the game you're not going to get as much which is super cool that they even thought of that well yeah and there's a lot more climbing surfaces that are available now that when you click the focus button you'll see those little uh you'll see the yellow marks on there but they're added by the focus and yeah. so that shows you and so there's actually a lot more free climbability in the game world pretty much any rock face now oh my uh, god then that shit pisses me off because sometimes you think that you're climbing towards something correctly and the game's just fucking with you and you can only go up a little bit and then it's like ha, no bitch and you're like <laughs> i feel like some some of it is probably auto-generated because yeah you're right you'll see some handholds in place Places that like don't go anywhere <laughs> yeah like we were playing the other day alan and i and there was one like he accidentally like clicked it instead of held it and it was on the ground on a rock like beneath aloy's feet and i was like what the fuck is this here for focus like what are you <laughs> what but yeah no the quick pulse i actually think was a good idea because um hit hitting the button to go into focus you always had to make aloy move slowly now you can just do a quick pulse and you can you can get a a view of everything that's around you. Uh, the downside of that is that in the first game, although it's not really a downside, and I'll explain why, but you know, in the first game, things just sort of automatically showed up in the environment, and you could see what things were were pick upable, those little icons or whatever. Now that's yeah. by choice. You click the button, and I think that's actually a lot better because you can be a lot more immersed in the world. In fact, I, I did enjoy the fact that the game offers a a uh, a more uh, a, a cleaner HUD, you know, less HUD. Yeah. And so that you can sort of just immerse yourself in the world. I think you can remove things like markers altogether if you want and have that open world experience if it's what you desire. Yeah. I really, I really like that this game kind of, it caters to the, to the horizon player, but it gives you, it gives you a little bit more. And I think we talked about this. There were, there was a game that we talked about where we talked about this in a sequel. Um, but we, we had spoken about it, and I don't, I'm trying to remember the episode, but it, it expands upon the idea a lot. And I really love that, you know, they keep Aloy the same at her core, and they keep a lot of the game elements the same at their core, but they add more onto it. Yeah, there are a lot more elements to work with now. Uh, and the skill tree, the skill tree, oh my I think, God, is done it's so weird. It's done so much better, though. I feel like it's kind of gotten, a, it, there's a little bit more of a custom element to it. Uh, yeah. First of all, most of the skills from the first game are just automatically brought into this game, which is nice. So you start out yeah. the adventure with, uh, without missing a beat, other than just not having any of the equipment that you had from the first game besides a bow yeah. and your spear. Yeah. Um, well, which I, I really they do like explain. that it does feel like a continuation, though, because it's it's not so much just like, oh, hey, like this is time later. It's like you just keep going. Like it's like the story doesn't stop. And I really like that. Um, but yeah, that is something that um, actually the the first armor that you're wearing in the game if you look at the the description of it, it is the shield weaver armor from the first game, which is the hardest armor to get. And it's the most complicated armor. And there's actually like a whole different thing that you have to do to get it, except it, it actually describes that it's lost its shield weaving ability. So it is the same armor from the first game that you wear, which is super fucking cool. I love that they did that. Is it the armor that like you have to op you have to complete the side quest to obtain? You have to Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool too because Assassin's Creed Brotherhood did the same thing. It actually assumes that you uh, co collected the the armor of Altair from Assassin's Creed 2. Um and I so canonically 
Aloy did all the side quest missions in Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn. Because I feel like a lot of these characters that are introduced probably also are side quest characters that you might have missed. Oh, well, some of them, yes. Um, so there is one, I'm not going to reveal who it is, but you can basically do some hunting stuff, and that character is in this game. Okay, I think that's the character I just met, and I don't yeah. know who she is. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the and I do love that they brought a lot of these people back because, like, not only did I love Varl, and he is, you know, he is a part of the main quest, but you can, I think, go back for a side quest with him and his mom. Um, Aaron, of course, he's a vital part of the first game, so I would never see why he would not be part of the second game. Um, and then, you know, getting, you know, there there is sequences where you do get to kind of take yourself back a little bit. And if you're not too cohesive with the story, like some people, you know, they played it and they're not the type of person to play it again, um, but they do want to play the sequel. You can have in the um, inventory when you meet somebody um, or if, if something is referenced, like, for example, one of the sub functions of um, Gaia, um, if they're like talking about it, just like, oh, yeah, like I've, I've seen this before. You know, this is, you know, whenever they're just talking about um, what happened with Hades and all that. Um, it actually brings up like a character profile and it explains everything from the first game up to the point where you're at, which is super cool. I love that they're like thinking of things like that, because even if you do play, you know, the first game and then you get into the second game, you know, it's like, who is this again? I just played this game, but who the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, oh, okay. I got it. I got it. Cool. Understood. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I thought that that was cool that yeah, just canonically we, uh, Aloy does do all the side quest missions in Horizon Zero Dawn that rewards the players who went through all of that and gives players, I guess, a reason to go back and play it. I, I would say using my experience, I think it would be better to have go and to go and play the first game before you play this one. Yeah. Yeah. But- it, this is not a standalone. It's definitely a sequel. It's definitely a sequel, and and it's funny too because they they do bring you up to speed at the beginning and and give you all the plot elements, but they basically spoil the entirety of the first game for you. So it's like, you know, yeah. you, you might as well you might as well go and play that if you haven't played it. But hap- like if you let's say you played through the first game, just maybe you liked it, but you just didn't really get into it. You didn't play all the way through it. Maybe like me, you and and you're just not interested to give it a shot, then I would say, you know, go ahead and jump into this game. I mean, they'll give you a rundown and you'll at least be able to go through the story. I just feel like there's so much that I'm missing in, in, in terms of, you know, an enriching experience and, and really being able to to identify with these characters and relate. But at least, you know, I know basically what's happening. Yeah. I mean, that was the same for Alan because Alan only watched me play a little bit of it. And I was trying to get a playthrough in before we started this game and I just didn't get the chance to. So there are some things that Alan does recognize, but it kind of helped him understand more of this game as he went through the beginning. Um, so, I mean, that that's a cool thing that you can do, too. Yeah. It, it is it is a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, I wanted to touch on the skill tree because uh, there are a lot of new things that you can do. It reminds me somewhat of like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In that you know you have some more uh, passive type skills that you can increase, but uh, needless to say, everything that you do is, is going to have an effect on Aloy. So not every skill that you collect is gonna is is gonna unlock a new ability for her. But you know most of them are actually going to be passive, and then a lot of them are going to work towards uh, unlocking these new Valor surges, which are really cool. It's like an extra ability that you get. Oh one yeah, from those each, are super fun. One from each skill path. So depending on whether you're like me and you like to, you know, focus a lot on like the stealth or the machine aspects, or let's say you like, prefer to focus on ranged combat or uh, or melee, uh, there's a unique skill. There's I think like each of them has two valor surges. You can equip one at a time, and you just by by uh, com- by gaining points and and doing performing actions in combat or or you know. Aloy sort of builds up her Valor, and then she gets to use these extra abilities, which can range from things like, you know, creating a uh, creating a, a, a force field of invisibility so for stealth operations, to drinking a potion that will restore all of her health and clear status effects, to just bolstering up her stats, you know, and, and, and giving you a chance to deal more elemental damage or... or uh, more critical hits than things like that. So uh, I did actually enjoy that quite a bit is that there's a new element to gameplay. Uh, they, they really went all out in adding a lot of new things for Aloy to do in the midst of battle or even when traversing the world. Yeah. There's just so, there's just so much that this game just 
does so right. And I really, really love the Valor Surges. Like, I, it was not something, when I first started playing, I was like, I don't know if I'm even going to use this. Like, the thing that's kind of hard is you do have to do, like, a combo and then kind of shoot them. So it's almost like a Mortal Kombat kind of thing in a little bit of a way. Um, but it, 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 if you can make it work, it does work. I also forget it's there half the time, so I forget to fucking use it. Also, Same thing with the cooks and the food. The cooks, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I didn't think the cooks were that useful. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, but it's like... It is, though. Like, I actually, I ate um, I ate a meal right before I went into um, a big boss battle, and it ended up helping me, like, tenfold, because my health was increased thanks to this fucking food from this random fucking cook, and I ended up actually beating the boss. Like, if I hadn't, I would have been fucked. That's good to know. I mean, it's one of those things that you kind of like, eh, I don't know if I'll need that, but then actually comes in super fucking handy It's later. a good buff. There's some good, good things in there. Yeah. Uh, I also like how... Um... Jesus, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's all about that food, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought the food was a good idea. They're uh, they're also now melee combos, you know. Yeah, and that like, that's something I don't remember being in the first game is that uh, you can actually pull off sequences of combos that are good at breaking blocks and or or building up energy so that you can you can uh, unleash it all on an enemy and things like that. And what's cool is that you even get like tutorial segments through the pit trials that show you how to pull off each of these different skills. Yeah, it's it's super dope. Like it's just it's it. I don't know. I was very weary of it at first, but now I'm like, okay, like I can get into this. But also, I do miss the fact that the spear is not OP anymore. It, yeah, it, it does feel like it's been buffed quite a bit. Uh, in fact, a lot of things have in this game. I think a lot was done to make the game feel more challenging. And um, oh my god, though it is though. You have to feel like like with I had a completely different strategy for Zero Dawn than I do for Forbidden West. And, like, it's a very, very weird thing. Like, you you think that you're going to play a sequel and it's going to be almost the same so you can play the same strategy, but this game makes you fucking think. Like, you have to think quick on your feet. You have to make sure that you have, you know, for, for me, like, I wasn't the biggest trapper um, and I didn't use a lot of tripwires in the first game. Like, it just wasn't really my thing. You know, I really like the tear blast arrows. Those were my fucking thing. Um, and those are... Thus far, what I've seen, not in this game, which is not cool, Gorilla. I'm not happy with you for that because that was my shit. Um, well, I, I, when, I think the thing that kind of replaced it for me so far was the the gauntlet with the tear, the tear slicer element. Thing. Yeah, yeah, true. But um, there are actually a lot of new weapon types too, like the spear launchers. Those things are fucking dope. <laughs> also, that is something that I did want to talk about that I, I really do love about this game. And someone had mentioned this in the Horizon Zero Dawn group. Um, so there is somebody that did confirm that um, a character that you meet, um, she's a young lady, is autistic. And I really do like that there is representation. Oh, no um, way. Like, yeah. Yeah, so there is somebody that you meet that is autistic, and there is somebody that does have Alzheimer's. So as somebody with a dad who most likely has dementia, uh, we're actually getting that checked out soon. Um, it's it's cool that they have that kind of stuff. You know, they actually represent people who have, you know, mental things going on and, and physical things going on. And, you know, the, the brain does degrade over time, you know, and, and Alzheimer's and dementia do happen, and they actually acknowledge that. You know, it's not, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm sure with the rebirth of a civilization were lost from the old world. You know, Aloy does have a focus, but... You know, she doesn't know physical ailments. You know, she can, you know, investigate a murder scene, but that doesn't mean that she can diagnose a brain issue. Um, and I, I love the fact that that's represented in this game. And I really do respect and love Gorilla for that because it's not something that you'll see another game do. And they, they did it so artfully and beautifully that it's like it's it's a natural part of these people. And it's so fucking awesome. Like, I, can't, I could not stop talking about it when I found out that it was confirmed by Gorilla. I was like, oh, my God, yes. That's awesome because it means that you know, like even in a post-apocalyptic world, I mean, these things happen, and and I'm happy to see that that's you know still an issue. Uh, it does seem like like a lot of things aren't the same for them. I mean, I guess uh, uh, well, I was gonna say there isn't racism, but there is xenophobia. There is very much a sense of like not nationalism, but for be for lack of a better term, nationalism. Just this you know tribal attachment and this hatred of other of other cultures so that ties in 
but race yeah. racism doesn't appear to be a thing. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And it's and it's done so artfully because like there are some things, you know, there are some games where that issue does have to be talked about. And then we did talk about this in the last game. There was a lot of that prevalent in the first game. You know, like Aloy is fucking hated upon and, you know, she's this outcast and, you know, she's this type of person. And while it's not necessarily like a racism kind of thing, it is one of those kind of issues. And this game, it really touches on, you know, like, like, for example, like, um, I don't want to give anything away, but one of the tribes, they're like, it doesn't matter who you are as a person, what gender you are, what's going on with you. If you're a fucking warrior, you're a warrior. And I love that. And, you know, Aloy has always seen the world like that. Um, And you do touch on more issues. I know we talked about a lot of these theories and ideas and things that are represented in, in the first game. It does carry on into the second game. And it does actually touch on it very beautifully. And it adds its own aspect in the second game where it's like, damn, like you really do respect Aloy just as a human being. You don't disrespect her because she's a woman who managed to do all of this. And it's, it's super fucking cool. Like they just, they continue to touch on the subjects that are very hard to talk about without causing, you know, an issue. It's like, Oh, it wasn't touched on enough or, Oh, there was too much of it in my face. Um, there is a character where I, I don't know if it was meant to be this way, but they're trans. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's a, a, an issue that, you know, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people out there in the world that don't agree with that. But they did it to where it's not in your face, but it's something that's acknowledged and it's something that's there. And I, I really like that they didn't just, you know, brush over that fact. They didn't brush over being queer. Um, they didn't rush over the fact of being transgender. Those things, you know, it's it's still a thing, you know, even if you, you know, like it or not. At the end of the day, you know, like I've said before, it's not it's not your body. It's not your conscience. So why the fuck does, does it affect you? But the fact that they touched on this and added it into this world, like this person was like, it doesn't matter who I am. I'm a warrior for my tribe. It's like, yeah, that's fucking important. And you fucking yeah. did a great gorilla. Like, I love them so much for that. No, definitely. I mean, this game, it checks all the all the boxes, so to speak, but it doesn't even feel like it's checking all the boxes. It's just realistically representing things. And it is. You know, and that, it's not something that's talked about a lot in gaming either, because, you know, that's one thing that I, I've loved about being a gamer, you know, especially from from being a little girl is, you know, I'm I'm a girl, you know, and, and walking into a GameStop, I would be hated on because I was a female, you know, and, and you know, there's so many, you know, things that are, you know, now talked about like transgenderism and, you know, being non-binary or being queer, you know, whatever. And it's starting to become represented in the gaming world. But like the fact that they're doing it in an actual video game and opening up that conversation is monumentally like just it sets the bar like other games need to catch up. Other developers need to catch up because Gorilla is going to take everybody down with just being able to make people feel like they are accepted even in a video game. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's something that's super important for me. Yeah, and I think that, that I think that's important for people that are playing the game is to see that represented, but it's also just a part of creating a world that feels genuine. It does. It does. And you and you feel like this genuine like Aloy, like when she meets this person, she's like, I respect that. She's like, You do you. Like I love that. And she's just here for it. And Aloy's just like, she's she's an ally for sure. Like Aloy is an ally. <laughs> Also, something that I did want to bring up because we are talking about like talking and stuff. Angela Bassett, as as a person, I'm not going to give the name, but she Angela Bassett is um she's in um Marvel movies. Uh, she's in Black Panther. She is um, Athena in the 911 series. She's a she's a person of color, and she is an amazing actress. And I did not foresee her going into voice acting, but she is so fucking good. And actually, she just got a raise um, from 911 to be the most paid person of color as a as a woman. And I, like, I'm just I'm just fucking here for it. Like, she does such a good job portraying this character with such seething anger that I was like, a damn, like damn, like my jaw dropped to the floor when I realized who was voicing that character and who it was. I was like, damn, okay, Gorilla's gonna rip my heart out and give me freaking Angela Bassett right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah yeah i know the uh again the the performance is absolutely killing it i mean we have ashley birch still doing the voice and and facial uh, uh motion capture performance for aloy um but one thing we didn't i didn't realize the last time we recorded was that uh aloy actually has a different a different model for her likeness. yeah 
I thought it was the same girl. And I, I actually just, you had mentioned that to me. I did not even know that. I thought it was Ashley. Because Ashley Birch does look a lot like Aloy. And I know that, be, you know, is because, because, partly because English, Megan. Um, Daylight Savings Time is kicking my ass right now. Um, I know that's partly because, you know, she does the mocap for her. But, like, I didn't realize she was based off of an actual model. I thought it was just Ashley Birch. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that Ashley Birch would actually have a similar facial structure to whoever they were doing the likeness off of. That's probably important. But yeah, no, actually, the likeness is done off of uh, Hannah Hoekstra. She's uh, a Dutch actress. I was going to say, that sounds Dutch or Norwegian. (laughs) Uh, Not very well known. She hasn't been in a lot of stuff. In terms of video games, all she's done is is her work in Horizon. uh, And and she's only been in a handful of movies. But yeah, no, she's actually like this, which makes sense. That that usually is the case, is that they'll take somebody who's generally, sometimes not even an actor, just somebody who's like a model. Like in the case of... uh, uh, Desmond and Ezio and all of the people that look exactly yeah. like them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I say all of the people. It's pretty much just Altair. But anyway, uh, the, 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 the likeness behind uh, Desmond, Altair, and Ezio is, is, uh, is another dude who's not Nolan North. So. And I've had a lot of people talking about in the in the in the Horizon Zero Dawn group that this game, uh, you know, is inspired a lot of of Assassin's Creed and other games. And it's like, I don't understand what's wrong with that, because that series is amazing. And if if they were even able to get some of the climbing elements from that engine or any of the engines for those games, what would be wrong with that? That would entice more players to play this game. Like, I don't I don't personally see what's wrong with that at all. Like, I don't like I think it's an amazing thing that we're so far in gaming that you can see aspects of other games artfully done in a new game. And you're continuing to take the torch from another person. Yeah. Why is that wrong? You know? Oh, not at all. I mean, utilizing uh, a similar engine or, I mean, I feel like this game definitely ran off of the same engine and probably reused a lot of the assets. Oh, it did. From they Horizon did. Zero Dawn. I mean, yeah. it, if not, you know, obviously an updated engine, but uh, I would say that, yeah, I mean, it, it runs off of a lot of the same. And there's no reason to do any different because really all they needed to do was take the first game and just improve on it. Yes. Uh, and and this game does. There, There is actually also, by the way, there is somebody else who does the uh, Amanda Peary. She doesn't have any information, but she does the actual mo- motion capture performance. Uh, I'm assuming of, you know, like the parkour and the combat stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be some because there's going to be a model who's the face and then there's going to be somebody who does actually like her movements like Ashley Birch can't do everything, even though she is a bad bitch. Yeah. So there's actually a lot at play here. You've got somebody who 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 modeled the face, somebody who does the voice and, and does the actual like facial movements and whatnot. But then you also have somebody who provided their likeness and you also have somebody who provided the body movements. So it just shows how much work goes into a game. And, you know, of course, the protagonist is going to have the most amount of work put into them. Uh, Aloy does look quite a bit better. Uh, yeah, she does. Something we touched upon in the last one was that <laughs> is that she's so much more detailed that they actually show the little hairs on her face. I love that. And, people, and there was some some dude who outed himself basically as a virgin by by letting by letting everyone know that uh, I, I guess Aloy has peach fuzz. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, no, a lot of things were done to actually make her look uh more realistic, hyper more, realistic, yeah, more human. Um, I heard something about how she was designed to be less feminine. I don't know if that's actually true or not. I wouldn't care. I yeah. still I still think she's hot as fuck. So <laughs> yeah, no, Aloy could get it for sure. Like I'm sure, like. Just the the manner that she is, like, I'm hoping that she's, like, at least some part by because that would be just great. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I there's just so much, so much, like, talk about that. And I'm like, why does it matter? Like, she's literally scaling fucking ruins of buildings and climbing up through elevator shafts and shit. And you're worried about her looking feminine? Like, if she's more built than you, it's because she climbs more than you. Why does it matter? Like, she's st- if and that's just, you know basement bros but it's fine or it could be like in uh final fantasy 7 when cloud dresses up and and girls clothes and everyone's like whoa you're so muscular (laughs) you look handsome (laughs) but no uh you do what you oh cloud yeah yeah (laughs) but yeah no i i i do think that uh, a lot more work was put in into her animations and and just and, and actually the performance overall I'm running out of time, Elizabeth. The land is dying. People are suffering. 
Soon. They'll starve. And the machines meant to help us are out of control. I have to find a way to fix it all. And the answer is somewhere out in the Forbidden West. By yourself? Ha! No way. I'll be careful and... We're coming with you. PlayStation invested a lot into Gorilla because the and, and again it it's the same story. Horizon is another, you know, this even this game, Forbidden West, it's an underdog and it's not something that people talk about. I was literally just talking with my husband's best friend about this last night. He's like, "Yeah, I've heard good things, you know, I want to play the game." I was like, "Bro, I have never recommended a game more than Horizon Zero Dawn and you know me as a gamer, I've played a lot of shit and I will never ever ever stop talking about this series because it just, it, it touches everything. There's so much different shit in this game and it's so immersive and it's so full of lore and the graphics are beautiful and it's just, it's an amazing fucking game. Like, I just don't get why somebody could hate on this shit. Yeah. Also, we we got, uh, we're getting more uh, look at the this post-apocalyptic world, you know, areas in California like San Francisco and Yosemite. And, you know, I was kind of sad that when they expanded to the West, they didn't go a little bit further south to our great Lone Star State, but it's fine. Uh, that would be cool quite a it. bit further for her to go. But maybe in the next game. I mean, obviously, I already where I'm looking in, in, in already as far as I am into the game, uh, we're getting an idea that there's a greater world around this. I mean, all we've seen is what post-apocalyptic eastern or western america looks like so (laughs) yeah 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 there's got to be a way to look you know because there's you know they they did you know have a lot of people survive you know as as much as there weren't you know they do talk about that a lot you know there was a lot of people that fucking died and they acknowledge it um but you know that that humans survived you know Why, why would they not go you know all over the fucking planet you know i'm sure that there's things you know i'm sure that you know hephaestus and and hades and stuff have done things to make sure that there are places that are inhabitable inhabitable but i'm sure not everything is inhabitable the only thing i want to know is that they did they bring los angeles in yet <laughs> i i don't know um you know i was just in vegas in the game and that's fucking dope that's oh. fun as fuck oh really vegas yes 
Yes. Yeah. Well, that's confirmed too. Vegas, like, baby, Vegas. Yeah. And it, the the way that they talk about it is super funny too. It's it's so it's so great. <laughs> but um, I just I. I don't know. There's so much to to love about Horizon that I just cannot stop talking about it. And th- I did not think that they could improve this well on the on the first game. I was like I said in the beginning, I was so scared, and I don't even know why I was. Gorilla is an amazing developer, and I'm definitely excited to see where they branch out besides the Horizon series because PlayStation invested a lot into them. And something that I have been seeing is, you know, I think I read a a, a post the other day that. Only 13% of players have 100% of the game. Wow. Yeah. And thir- I, no, 13% of players have completed the game. 6.2% have 100% of the game. Damn. But something that's cool is actually um, PlayStation, whenever you finish the game, they send you like a whole message and all of this stuff thanking you for playing this game. How fucking cute is that? That is cute. I like that. You know, and, and, and I think that that's probably like the, the best, you know, the, the best compliment I think any developer uh, could get is ex- somebody explored my game world. Somebody, you know, took their time to to play my game that I turn, put my heart and soul in. Right. Turn over every stone, you know, and I, I think that, that that's really important. Yeah. And I'm really happy to see that. Yeah. No, they like 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 Gorilla absolutely loves their completionists and you know how in the dead space series we were talking about easter eggs so there are easter eggs in this game because of playstation and gorilla actually was so in love with it that they added their own um so someone actually discovered that there are two god of war easter eggs in this game oh yeah Mm mm-hmm it was really cute to see all of the different PlayStation uh, studios that are, you know, all, all the subsi- all the studios that are subsidiaries of Sony, kind of all congratulate uh, Horizon or Gorilla on on the release of this game. Yeah, and and like I was talking about in the last episode, I have never seen PlayStation so invested in the launch of a game. Like they went pretty fucking hard for Last of Us Two, but they went all out for this game. And if that doesn't tell you to play something. I, I don't know what will because they made statues. There's posts, all of the subsidiaries are posting. There's events. There's so much stuff going on for Horizon Forbidden West, and they're continuing to do it. We're almost a month in, and they're continuing to talk about it, and they just can't stop raving about it. Like, even the head of PlayStation was like, if you don't play it, like, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, like, I- that's that's fucking saying something. I think there's also definitely going to be a sequel. I mean, already in the works, we're getting a VR game. No, there is though. There is. Um, they've they confirmed it after the first game, after development um started on this game. They confirmed that it will be a trio trilogy, and yeah. I think that that's honestly probably the perfect way to do this. They could go somewhere really interesting because in this game they already started bringing up the implications of of space travel. Yeah. You know, as a thing, you know, like I noticed that in the beginning of the game, like there's a whole there was a whole set of people of old ones from basically the near future of our time that uh, knew that the earth was fucked and they decided to get on a ship and go and so it kind of leaves that open is are there people from like across the the, the solar system or you know the people living on the moon or, or mars or something that uh you know maybe maybe are there there is a civilization out there maybe they're the ones that sent the mysterious signal or whatever i don't know if that if that's ever even touched upon by the end of this game because i know that was a question that was still left after the first game (laughs) so i'm just i'm just throwing things out there i haven't played far enough into the game for any of this to be confirmed but it's just kind of how how what, what i feel like would be an interesting way to go about it um. Yeah, <laughs> something that I will say that I did notice about, you know, like the first game, like I did get a good amount of gameplay, but this game, I mean, I'm trying to do every side quest and everything before I even go to a main quest. Yeah. And there is so much shit. Oh, so yeah. So much shit. Like I'm 40 hours into gameplay and I'm like 30 percent through the game. I mean, it took me hours just to get into the Forbidden West and part of me wanted to mainline it and just get 
my way there, but then part of me just kind of really wanted to explore and do these yeah. other things. And, and You know what I read, though, is something that I, I related to, is someone said in the group chat, uh, or in this in this group that I'm on on Facebook, the Horizon for uh, Zero Dawn one, uh-huh. they said, take your time playing this game, because you are never going to get to play this game for the first time ever again. That's true. So fucking true. I literally take my time to do everything that I can. Um, and there is something that I did notice too, is a lot of people were talking about bugs. Um, this game is not even a month old yet, guys. Like there's going to be bugs. We have to work with gorilla. Let's give them their time to figure everything out. Like I personally, on my game, I have a bug where there's a camp and I, for some reason, cannot get through it. Like it will not open up. Like I can open the quest and I can go to it, but it does not clear it out. So I literally, like, it's not even a big thing for me. I just go back and farm the kills when I go back that way, and I just keep going. I don't give a fuck. Like, I will keep playing this game. Like, there's some times where, like, uh, machines won't die, so I have to run, like, 200 feet away and then come back. So, that you know, I waste a little bit of ammo, but, you know, that's that's part of the gameplay. It's a brand new fucking game. They're still coming out with patches. Like, give Gorilla some time, guys. Like, definitely invest in it. Like, just because somebody else has a big bug doesn't mean you're going to, and it's okay. It's going to happen. I haven't really noticed much of anything myself, and, and I bet the game plays even a hell of a I mean, obviously, bugs are still going to exist, but I bet the game even plays a hell of a lot better on the PS5. I mean, I know it that... It probably does, yeah. You know, with the increased <laughs> processing power uh, and and uh, a lot of the things that you can do with the, with the PS5 controller. <laughs> true, true. So I, I I would love to play this game, and apparently it's a free upgrade. So uh, by the way, if you have a PS5, <laughs> quick little tip: get the PS4 version of this game and upgrade it for free. You'll pay less. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> I I actually heard that it's kind of a loophole, and apparently I think this is the last game that they're gonna actually it offer is. the upgrade for. Mm-hmm. So we are gonna have to PlayStation. You're gonna need to make some consoles soon. Like that's, I think that's the one thing that I was disappointed about is PlayStation hyped this game up so hard, but they didn't make sure to have the units ready for launch because a lot of people, you know, some people wait until a specific game to upgrade. I'm I'm one of those people, and I really did want like a Horizon exclusive version of the PlayStation Five. I won't lie to you, and I was very upset that that was not an option because I'm the type of person to buy the collector's version. I like having little tidbits and pieces of things, um, especially a game that I'm this in love with. You know, I love Horizon as much as I love Mass Effect. I got the Legendary Edition. Um, I didn't get all the extras with this one because Alan bought it for me. You know, if I bought it for myself, I would. Um, but I, I was really disappointed to not get, like, a, you know, a Horizon-themed PlayStation and a Horizon-themed controller like they did with The Last of Us, as well as all of the things that come with the Collector's Edition. Like, why didn't we get that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that w- that would have been cool. And, and I, I mean, I think they're definitely going to need to. I, yeah. I Originally, this game, when it was announced, was a PlayStation 5 game. And I think just because of the shortage of consoles, they realized that they needed to... I think that's why this... development took a little bit longer too. Yeah, they probably had to. They probably had to do get a lot of work to, uh, in order to make reverse sure... engineer. Yeah, and basically, like, say you added all these things that you can do in the PS5. So you have the difficult decision of, you know, do I cut this thing or do I spend a little bit more time so that I can make sure that the PS4 is capable of doing this? Yeah. Um, it was just something that I, I really wished would be there because I would I, I was waiting for this game to come out to upgrade and there was no possible way to do it. And I was I was thoroughly disappointed. I was I, I'm because I mean, Spider-Man got its own console. God of War has gotten its own console for years, you know, um, and even uh, like even with the switch, Animal Crossing got its own um, with the Xbox Gears of War gets its own like Horizon is considered now like a a pinnacle of PlayStation gaming. Like why doesn't Aloy get her own version? Like that's kind of fucked up. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like Ellie may be a strong ass bitch, but Aloy is, Aloy would beat her ass. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Like if uh, you put Ellie up against Aloy, Aloy's you're done. One snap Thanos style. You're dead, Ellie. That's true. I mean, Aloy has quite a, a few things up her sleeve. But what is really cool is, is there's a particular enemy that you fight at the point that I just passed that Aloy's weaponry had no effect on. You know, I'm like, is this dude mm. a hologram or mm-hmm. what's going on here? Mm-hmm. He's a big fucking bitch. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, there's a completely different strategy for that fight. And and so, you know, finally finding some enemies that are going to be, you know, difficult for Aloy to face. 
machines even. Yeah, Aloy is not like Kratos. She is not OP. Like Kratos is always OP, but like Aloy is not. Aloy is not in this game. She gets humbled right the fuck then. She's like, oh, I could die. <laughs> and shortly after that, gets herself on bed rest for a little while, and she's got to actually take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy. Take it easy. So we, we get a lot more lore on this game. I think the uh, the, the mythos is, is explored in, in more detail. And when we get to see more of what, you know, uh, this this pre-apocalyptic world looked like that's not so different from our own world, just a little bit further along. Even the ethos and pathos in this game are very heavily explored. Like, it's all just, you get it all, baby. You get it all. Yeah, yeah, for real. But, um. I guess without, you know, getting into too many spoilers, there's not going to be I'm trying whole... so hard not to. It's very difficult. I so I told you guys I'd try. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you wanted to bring up in particular? Um, I did want to talk about, of course, we all know that the graphics are just fucking stunning and make you want to just cry your eyes out. Um, We all know this, and the first game is like this, and that's the reason why I suggest the first game. I... I am so in love with the fact that this game expands upon the, the um, what's it called? The soundtrack of the first game. You are, you know, there are some elements, you know, like Aloy's main theme is, oh, like you get to continue in that. And you hear that voice in the background still in some of the songs when you're walking through some shit. Yeah. Fucking yes. Fucking yes. The soundtrack is great. Even better mm -hmm. than the first game. Yeah. Uh, there's that op there's an opening segment that actually had a uh, a song like a, a song with with words with lyrics that I thought was pretty cool that whole like intro segment that you get like kind of after the prologue and it's it's just Aloy trekking across land from Meridian over to the Daunt. Oh yeah, yeah, it's almost it reminds me a lot of um like the Final Fantasy movie where you finally get like words to that song. Um it's 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 kind of similar to that cuz that song is actually Part of that, like, there's a, there's a cut from it from the first game. It's near towards the end of that, se of that sequence. Okay. So you actually do get a piece of the first game in that opening sequence, part two. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And and uh, you even do get to visit Meridian for, for a minute. Yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you can go back, but... <laughs> you can't go into the actual city, I don't think, but you... No. You, yeah. But you get a little bit of reading. That whole prologue segment, I don't know exactly where that takes place. I don't think you go back there, but... Yeah, I don't know where that is. No idea. But, I mean, you are in, like, when you go back to Meridian, like, you can't go back after that, uh, that I've seen yet. So, I mean, yeah. but that's the... a part of the map, I guess, that you just don't get to see. The, the game does open up with a bang. I like how you're just thrown right into the action, introduce you to a few of the game's mechanics, and then you're just on your way. And the game doesn't spend as much time getting to the point as the first game did, which yeah. makes sense because the first game was setting up a whole world. Now we're just sort of, you know, in the it's middle of It's like the first it. season of a show. It's like the first season of Game of Thrones. Like, it's kind of slow paced, but once it opens up, oh, it opens. Yeah. Whole and, Pandora's box. <laughs> and this game sort of just opens. It gets right into the action. Uh, if you need a refresher on certain things as you meet characters, and like, like I said, including familiar faces that you, you know, maybe you don't recognize, uh, the game actually has a whole section in the menu, in the pause menu, uh, with, with, you know, kind of da data entries on each character and what they did and whatnot, which is nice. It's nice if, like, you're like me and you got to pick up things up. Or let's say, you know, the game came out in 2017. You haven't picked it up in three years or uh, four, four years, right, actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 17. Yeah, so uh, you haven't picked up the game in four years. Um, you, might need a, you might need a refresher. I know I did. Uh, all right, hold on a second. No, I'm all about this. Five years. Because it came out in, like, around, like, Mar February, March 2017, right? Mm -hmm. And this is February. Well, now it's March. Oh, 22. 2022. Oh, God. So that's oh, actually that's five time. years. Yeah. <laughs> Way off. We went from three years to five years. Okay, it's officially about five years almost exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. But, but yeah, I and, and something that I, I did want to add, you know, I've said this a lot, but the way the gorilla makes this just a perfect continuation is not something that I've seen before. And I hope we get, because of PlayStation's collaboration in this, I hope we get more of this going into future games that are developed by PlayStation. A God of War, I'm looking at you, baby. Well, PlayStation's the publisher. The developers yeah. are, you know, Guerrilla Games versus Santa Monica Studio. 
Yeah. Uh, but they're all subsidiaries of PlayStation. Yeah. Well, so, Play- so I'm, what I mean is like PlayStation has like a big hand in how everything is developed. So I'm hoping that because they have such a big hand in this game going forward, they kind of do similar elements with storytelling in future games. Well, you're not wrong because they're, they are, they're, they are sort of making their own brand, which is PlayStation Studios now. Yeah. So, like, like Xbox did. So taking, uh, I think it's a combination of say Santa Monica studio, which actually originally was a part of Sony, um, but Sony ended up buying studios like Naughty Dog and and uh, Insomniac, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't think they bought out Gorilla. I think Gorilla's still Punch. independent. They're they're still independent. I do believe so. I believe they are in collaboration with PlayStation, but I believe they are they're, they are currently their own studio. Because Aloy's featured in all of the PlayStation studios. Yeah, um, you can actually get her armor in. Uh, I found this out today that you can get her armor in Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's so cute. You can get Nora Brave armor. Or what about Sucker Punch? Are they a subsidiary right now? Ah, ooh, actually, I I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I'm gonna check that out really quick. Okay, so according to Wikipedia, Guerrilla Games is a subsidiary. Is it? Okay, I didn't know if they'd sold out or not, but as of last year, they didn't. <laughs> Uh, I know, like for instance, uh, Insomniac was was very recent. Uh, we did when we did our episode on Spider Man. Insomniac was still an independent developer. They just frequently worked with Sony and almost exclusively for Sony consoles. Um, as of as of that happening, and I think it was maybe not even too oh, much Sucker longer. Oh, Sucker Punch is it's a subsidiary. Yeah, I just uh, looked Sony it up too. Sony acquired them in 2011. Yeah, so Gorilla Game. Yeah, so actually, Gorilla was acquired in 2005. Oh damn! Yeah, probably so, right after Killzone because they killed themselves with that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Insomniac happened in 2019. I remember that wasn't too much long after we had actually said we had a made a whole point of it in the episode too. We're like, yeah, Insomniac's one of the few studios that is their own independent studio. But no, like, yeah. I, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think that PlayStation acquiring all of these uh, studios, especially recently, uh, they did recently acquire Fire Sprite. I think that was the most recent. Um, or either that or House Mark, the studio behind Returnal. I mean, but like Xbox is doing the same thing Blue and they've points. been doing it for a while. And, you know, Xbox has done really well with it. You know, they have a bunch of studios and indie, you know, developers and stuff underneath them. And they've seemed to do very well. I mean, look at the Forza Horizon series. That is a very, very well-loved series and that they're a subsidiary of Xbox. Um, same thing with the makers of Gears of War. You know, that is now a subsidiary. And they've bought a lot of companies, but they're doing very well. Um, and they seem to make it work. It seems like there's a very big, you know, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's almost, I know this is going to sound weird, but it's almost like Stellantis with FCA US. So um, the... Stellantis is the company that owns the Chrysler uh, subsidiaries here in, here in the USA, and they let Chrysler do what they want. Like if they want to slap a Hellcat in a minivan or slap a Hellcat in a truck, they're going to let them do it, but they're still their parent company. So I feel like Xbox and PlayStation very much are in the same page as that, and they, they let them have a lot of free reign. Um, I, I feel like, especially on PlayStation side, they're very, they're very open, um, you know, cause th- these games, you know, Xbox and PlayStation are two completely different worlds, right? The, I mean, even down to the controller, you know, everything is completely fucking different. Um, but they, it still seems like they have a lot of freedom to be their own and do their own, but they still, you know, acknowledge the fact that they are owned, you know, by PlayStation studios. Like for example, in this game, you know, there's a, there's a God of War Easter egg and they acknowledge God of War. Um, and you know. Um, uh, not saying I would ship Aloy and Kratos, but they would be cute. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I actually do like what a PlayStation's PlayStation is doing because what you're doing is you're sort of branding and, and you're cause PlayStation and Xbox realize now that their strengths aren't being technically more capable of one or the other. It's their exclusives. And yeah. so both Xbox and PlayStation or, or Microsoft and Sony acquiring all of these studios who they've already been working with intimately for years in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. But in other cases, they're also acquiring studios that, that used to, uh, they're, they're paying them to be exclusive. They're acquiring studios that used to not be platform specific. So it, it's, it's kind of a little bit of that, Ooh, you know, they got them and they got them. And, uh, for gamers, that may not be as much fun, you know, if, but I, I also at the same time, it sort of reinforces the idea that uh, you're buying into a brand. And, and the, the one reason why you might get one console or the other, unfortunately, that also means for a lot of us that we, that we do end up having to buy multiple consoles. Yeah. 
But I'm, I'm at the same time, you know, like I'm the type of gamer where gaming is gaming. But, but most um, everything gets released on PC later anyway, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. PC just gets all the fun. Um, but, you know, like I, I think that it's cool that, you know, there are gamers out there that are, are exclusive to one, but also that they, you know, are open to having everything. Because I have friends who, you know, they're like, oh, well, I'm, you know, hands down an Xbox gamer. Like my brother, for example, you know, Agony, he's been on the, the on the podcast. He is an Xbox gamer to his core. Me, I grew up on PlayStation. I'm a PlayStation gamer mostly, but I do have an Xbox and I I am looking into doing PC because I've heard that there's a lot of fun to be had on PC. I'm going to open myself up to it because if there's going to be a cool game to play, I'm going to find a way to fucking play it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, having a podcast, I feel like there's there's kind of a prerequisite of of having multiple consoles. Yeah. (laughs) So that's that's the thing. Um. And there are some games that I'll only buy on one console, like Mass Effect. Yeah. Like, I would never buy that on a PC. I would only ever play it on Xbox. <laughs> well, I mean, I think well, I think the, the line between the two is becoming more blurred. And it's like, I think now if you buy a game on Xbox, you can play it on PC or something like that. Is that a thing? I could be wrong. I mean, there are there are a lot of ones, you know, like if you have the Xbox Game Pass... You can play a lot of Microsoft Studios games on PC just by having the Game Pass, and it's already built into the into the uh, Microsoft interface. So I mean, it's so easy to do; it's not even fucking funny. Yeah, but anywho, uh, as far as my final thoughts on Horizon Forbidden West, like I said, I think it's one hundred percent an improvement on the first game. I think uh, if the first game just wasn't interesting enough for you, which I disagree, I think the first game was fucking awesome. But oh god, you know, I did get lost in other games and. Uh, playing this one really 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 uh was awesome and, and you know kind of renewed my interest and made makes me excited for what's going to happen next and so I, I think it's an absolutely uh absolutely competent open world action rpg even having coming out at the same time as elden ring you know yeah. i, I kind of want to play both of these games equally <laughs> Yeah, you know, for me, like, I've watched my brother play it, and I'm I'm not, like, a big Dark Souls. I was never a big Dark Souls player because that's a Xbox, you know? So I didn't get to grow up on that. But, you know, I honestly feel, you know, this game has a lot bigger map than Elden Ring, and there's a lot more to do, Um, I feel like, personally, than Elden Ring. You know, but, that, I mean, that's a, that's also the kind of play style that Elden Ring is. But, you know, it's 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 interesting that a lot of people are making comparisons because in, in my opinion, it's like apples and oranges, but it is going to be interesting this year to see who wins the game award. It really is. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be fight to tooth and nail. It's probably going to be Elden Ring, but <laughs> I really hope it's fucking Horizon. This game is definitely going to get nominated. It'll it, along with, you know, the other open world action RPGs that came out recently. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this is definitely, if not first place then second place. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do you mean? What, what about your final thoughts? Final thoughts, guys. I, I, this, I picked this game series for a reason. And, and, you know, before we knew that there was an actual like sequel, like this is a game that I've always wanted to talk about because I love Aloy. I love her story. I love everything in horizon. And I've never been, you know, more in love with a game than I am with this. Like this, even the second game I've talked about how horizon made me fall in love with gaming again, forbidden West expanded upon that so hard that I'm literally looking at new games to buy. And I haven't done that in a while. Um, So if you're really needing something to get away from your life and get back into gaming, this is 100% it for you. Like this is not only like a game that I feel will be, you know, a pinnacle in gaming history as we get even further into, you know, technology. I feel like this is a game that if you haven't played it, like something's going on, like you need to play this game. You need to. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. And if you haven't checked out the first game, go ahead and play that first. This game's very much a continuation of that one. And if you mm-hmm. have any intention to go back and play it, um, I would suggest playing it first so that that way you don't get used to too many of the nicer things that this game has to offer. <laughs> yeah, and definitely don't go pla- go don't go back and play the first game because you're gonna try and glide and kill yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I honestly. I think that it, it it's honestly such a such an awesome game, and, and I love it's I love seeing Horizon get the recognition it deserves. As far as next time goes, we already talked about it. We mentioned it. Elden Ring. We're kind of late on that, like we are late on this. I mean, we're we're sort <laughs> of uh, <laughs> we're really pushing the spoiler free game launch thing. Sorry, here. guys. But 
that's okay. The, my main goal for the month of March is to go ahead and finish Elden Ring, maybe get a bonus round out. And then in April is our 420 month. So we're starting out with a bad game review on on Anthem. <laughs> and then we're going to be doing our 420 special on GoldenEye. Bo is going to be co-hosting with me on that episode. Because... Can't wait to roast that bitch. Yeah, not, it's going to be a lot of fun. I haven't <laughs> haven't played it yet. Uh, the next thing, the the game we were going to do this month was uh, was Hellblade Cinema Saga. That's probably getting pushed to May. Yeah. But um, but yeah, with Hellblade Hellblade Cinema Saga, we're gonna be we're we're, we're gonna be doing that in May, and then I might as well go ahead and let you guys know June we're gonna be talking about Fire Emblem. Uh, I believe we are doing the Blazing Blade, the first game in the series. Might be subject to change. I know Zach was mentioning he likes the Sacred Stones and a few of the other ones, but I think the idea is we're gonna do the the the, the very first game that was released in the United States under the title Fire Emblem. Um, but Oh, something I did want to mention before we leave the topic too far, and yeah. it was something I just remembered. Um, there is a character that has the same voice actor as the main character in Sekiro. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. An- an- another little... Uh, another little... Thing to love. Oh, another little connection to make with From Software here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna join this group because this uh, this this post that you just sent I can't well I can't see. It's the Horizon Zero Dawn group. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna join it. Have you finished Horizon Zero Dawn? Uh, okay, so then and then and <laughs> Fire Emblem was originally going to be our season finale, but because of moving some things around, I believe in July we should be doing our season finale on Resident Evil Two and then Resident Evil Two Remake. So that, that's kind of our whole layup, our, our lineup of games, layup, our lineup of games for the rest of the season. And uh, we're, we're already, you know, sort of planning out, or you know, at least I've been jotting down what I want to do with next season, season five. Oh, I'm excited. I got some ideas already. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, we'll probably have to do something special in season six because that'll be our five year anniversary. <laughs> So probably I'm thinking, I'm already thinking that we, we may, since Fable 3 was our pilot episode, it would make sense to go back to the, into the Fable franchise by mm. then. Maybe the new game will be up by then, but if not, I mean, we can do like Fable 2 or something. That would be cool and kind of work our way backwards. <laughs> Going back in time. Yeah. So, but that's it. That's pretty much all we have left for this season. So, like I said, stay tuned for Anthem and then our 420 special on GoldenEye, uh, which we'll be playing on original hardware. And then, of course, the rest of this month, of, of, of this year, including Hellblade Cinema's Sacrifice. I'm so excited. I cannot freaking wait. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Feedback on your platform of choice. And uh, we also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Join our Facebook group, Collateral Media Podcasts. And uh, hit us up on uh, Podchaser. That's the social media for for, for, uh, for podcasts. And if you really do enjoy the content, you want to see us do more, go ahead and donate to our Patreon. We have exclusive Let's Play video game commentaries. We have Yeah, one- we're planning on doing some on Horizon, so stay tuned for that. Yes, yeah, that's definitely going to be, I think, uh, you know, starting with with Zero Dawn probably would be a good, (laughs) that way I have an excuse to actually, like, finish the game. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, We have $1 and $5 tiers, and as soon as, if you pay any amount of money, you get access to the commentaries, and uh, when I see more interest in that, um, I'll definitely have more interest in doing it. Yeah, for sure. Like, I was going to do the um, the Mass Effect, but I haven't seen a lot of interest in it. So if you guys do want to see that, like, we will definitely do it. We just want to make sure that we're not just producing content and nobody's watching it. But nobody gets to see. <laughs> <laughs> the first episode of every playthrough is free, so that's one thing we, we like to do, you know, sort of get you hooked. Because unlike Collateral Cinema, where we can do this all in one take, it's going to be a multiple episode adventure. Uh, yeah. Going through this together. Uh, I, I, You're going to do... hang out with us for sure. I, I, I try to do 100% playthroughs, but I don't. not necessarily all of that gets captured. I may cut off the camera and do a few things off screen just so, you know, we don't have to do all of the boring shit. But, yeah. But as, as, a, as a whole, you know, uh, we, we, we try to kind of go, go around and do everything. So I guess that's really all there is to say. Uh, I've been Ashley Chancellor. And I've been Megan Gomez. This is Collateral Gaming. We are out.
Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by their respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.